the zoom is done. So, um, one more scripture. We talk about uh, music, uh, the strong link with uh, prophecy. Uh, we see it in Second Kings three. This is uh, uh, the, the kings actually go and uh, meet with Elisha, right? Prophet Elisha. And this is what we see Second Kings three and verse fourteen. <coughs> Where Elisha says, you know, has the Lord of hosts, because they the king basically want to hear a word from the Lord. If they are going and they are surrounded, their armies are coming, and then so they they want to know uh, what what should they do, uh, etc. Now Elisha says something very um, unique, and he says, uh, verse 15, now bring me a physician. And that's what he says. So they are they are inquiring, what is the Lord saying? Give us a word from the Lord, and that is what we did in those days. That if we wanted to hear from God, they would go to the prophet, the seer, right? So that's what they did. So now Elisha says, Bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Okay, so the musician plays, the hand of the Lord comes upon him. Elisha. What is the hand of the Lord? We say hand of the Lord. Um, blessing. What is the hand of the Lord of that God? Sorry? His power of God. His favor. His being in that See, hand of the God. If, 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 okay, let's say Francis puts his hand, the hand of Francis on you. What does it mean? He has a over you. No, he's just put his hand over you. He puts his hand over it on you. That doesn't mean he has authority over you. Right? So that means that he experienced the touch of God. Simple. <laughs> he experienced the presence of God. He experienced the touch of God. I think we went very deep. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so so he experienced the presence of God. He experienced the touch of God. But what is I mean, what is unique here is he asked for a musician. Which means Elisha the prophet knew that. Hey, there is a link between uh, an anointed person, anointed meaning, a person who was you know, anointed by God, was used to um, experience the presence and power of God, and that person playing the musical instrument or doing what they are good at doing that good. And the presence of God. So we, we see here, okay. So it's not like the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha and then the decision played. The decision played and the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha. Let me see. What do we, what do we, what do we see next? Right? Verse 16. Um, and he said, thus says the Lord. So, he's, so you see the sequence. Decision plays. So first, Elisha calls for a decision. Decision plays. Elisha experiences the hand of the Lord. And then he begins to speak. So something he received, when he experienced the hand of the Lord, he received the word of the Lord, and then he speaks forth and he says, Thus says the Lord. Very direct word from the Lord. This is what you need to do. Make the valley full of ditches. And you know, the prophecy goes on verse 17, etc. So uh, it's a word which is very encouraging to them. Uh, and then you know, where they say that he will deliver the Moabites. Into your hands, etc. So it's obviously for the people who came there. It's a very, very encouraging. All the fear would have, you know, been swept aside. Here's the word of God. So, so that for us, you know, uh, when we are considering worship ministry, for us, it's uh, something again we must have been started. as a musician, as a worship team minister. This is something that I can expect. 
this is this is what I see in the old covenant, but so much more in the new covenant where I am, which I am part of. Therefore, you know, I can play skillfully. I can play with my heart, focus on the Lord, and that can do something in the atmosphere. There is the release of the prophecy that happens. So, so people are, you know, the prophetic work here bring it brought uh, comfort to them, but also declare deliverance and so on. So, so many things happen when the prophetic word is released. Right? All of that the prophetic word can bring about edification, exhortation, comfort, warning. Uh, you know, a change in destiny, calling out the plans and purposes of God for a person, you know, uh, restoration, all those things, right? Against the deliverance, against uh, the demonic powers, and so on, right? Everything can happen in property worship, where we are declaring uh, you know, the, the heart of mind of God. And so that is something that we need to understand. So which means that people, we as musicians, as worship team, you know, ministers, we need to be kind of trained in it in the sense. We need to be aware, first of all, if this is possible, these are the possibilities. It's not just about the worship team needs to know. So it's not just about singing some happy songs or you know, some serious songs, uh, some triumphant songs. It's not just about that, but we can actually release the property work in the community. So it's a, it's a, you know, it's something that is exciting. It is something that we can look forward to. Something that's so fulfilling, knowing that you know, God, you are an instrument. Even as you hold those instruments and play, you are an instrument in God's hands. That's a very fulfilling and very comforting thought. Okay, so um, let me let me consider, you know, the, this person who actually. Is mentioned in Genesis 4 as one who played those instruments for the first time we encounter that we see that obviously his name is Jubal. And uh, if you consider the Hebrew word Jubal, it just means a stream or a flow. Right? And many times we, we refer to the, the presence of God or the ministry of God as a as a river, the work of the Holy Spirit as a river. And uh, the Lord Jesus says in John chapter 7. Says when talking about the ministry, about the Holy Spirit, says, you know, now he who believes in me out of the sin of being the flow of the words of living the flow of the words of living water. So, uh, so the work of the Holy Spirit is referred to as a flowing river, it's pictured as a river. So we see that, you know, the flow of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In property ministry is something that we can expect. So, what should I do? What, should, what are some guidelines right? as, a, as a worship minister? What are some as a worship team? What are some things that I need to be prepared of? What are some things that I can prepare for? Okay. So, one thing is uh, when it comes to property ministry, what are we saying? We are saying I'm, I want to be led by the Spirit. Okay. Holy Spirit leads. And as the Holy Spirit leads and as the Holy Spirit speaks, as God drops these things into my heart, I want to release it. So, so we are spirit led. Okay. So, which means that I need to have close or close relationship with God. So there's no compromise on that. I think we know this, right? There's no compromise on that to be led by the Spirit of God. Uh, is to have a close walk with God so that when God communicates with God shares, you know it in your heart unmistakably. Because you recognize, you don't miss out on the voice of God. You don't miss out on the leading of God. So um, God has a personal way in which he relates or has a personal way in which he connects with you. And uh, well, all these principles and Precepts are there in which how God speaks and how God guides and all that. So we grow in our relationship with Him. Walk with Him, talk with Him, etc. Secondly, uh, is to have a lifestyle of worship. Okay. So where we're saying that, okay, life for me, worship is not the time that is segregated where I 
together and I sing all the people are there and I'm there in front of people that I'm doing this worship is not a not something that is like that, but it's part of my you know, like where we look at the other aspects where consecration uh, choices that I make is a worship of okay. God. Which verse talks about that? You know, some of the choices I make. Is actually worship of the Lord. Do all for the glory of God. Yes. Um, yeah, in a way, correct. So we eat or drink, do all of the glory of God. That's, a, that's an instruction. Correct. Um, also, uh, I'm just thinking of uh, Romans 12, right? Um, Romans 12. They are saying that uh, where Paul is exhorting and he says, you know, offer yourself, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. We know that you know, we are coming before him and we offer up sacrifices of praise to our lips. Here, we are exhorted to present our bodies as a living sacrifice to God, acceptable, which is your reasonable service. And then at the same thing, verse 2, Romans 12, verse 2, don't be conformed to the world. Be transformed that you may prove what is the good perfect. So this offering of our bodies, you will go further down. Uh, you know, it talks about um, presenting our members, presenting our members to God um, as a sacrifice to God, as something that is holy to God, and so on. So, so the thing is that when we offer our bodies, when we make those, uh, when we offer our bodies, we're talking about a consecrated. Uh, offering, right? something that is separated, something that is holy and the God. So, so our choices, our thoughts, um, second verse to talk, thinking about it is talking about thoughts, right? Being transformed by the renewing of your mind. So all this is seen as a worship unto God. So is that part of our lifestyle? So remaining a vessel of honor in God's hands, right? being submitted, etc. Now, you know, one thing to think about is uh, that when I'm saying I want to be spirit led, we are what we are saying is, God, you are my leader. Right? So if I'm, if, if, you know, who leads me, what goes the leader? What is doing that aspect of leading? So how can I consider someone to be a leader? How can I be, how, how can I, you know, desire to be led, be spirit led? If I don't consider Holy Spirit to be my leader, right? So which means he's leading, I'm following. I'm following based on his leading, his instruction. So I'm looking forward to um, you know what he's leading, what he's leading me into, and I'm looking forward to being what he is asking me to. So that aspect should be part of our lifestyle. So you're Communion with church. So, uh, so, like, uh, also, you know, people talk about like Brother Andrew, uh, one of those old, uh, you know, old saints of God. So, he talks about, you know, practicing the presence of God. Right? So, being aware of his presence, being uh, acknowledging his presence, even in the, uh, in the daily, in the, in the mundane, in the ordinary. You might be cooking, you might be washing, you might be whatever. Lifestyle of worship also uh, goes beyond words, beyond songs, because it, it is about action. Also, <laughs> where we are saying, you know, the choices we make, right? Some of the things. 
uh, Hebrews 13 talks about this, right? Hebrews, uh, this, uh, <coughs> Hebrews 13. So, uh, yeah, Hebrews 13 and uh, verse 16. Right? If you look at verse 15, it says, Let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to. Uh, to his name, so that is what you know you were talking about. Like, let us continue to do that during the day, whatever we are doing. Let's offer then verse 16. But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So, it's talking about generosity, it's about sharing, it's about good works. So, he's using the same word sacrifices. 15 verse 15 also is talking about sacrifices, which is the fruit of our lips, and here also it's talking about sacrifices. About generosity, sharing, good work. So, saying good, that is also something that God receives as worship. So, um, do this because God is well pleased. So, so having that as part of our lifestyle is also uh, worship. And so, as a prophetic, as a person who wants to be a prophetic worship minister. As uh, as a person maybe who wants the team to be a proper ministry team, to look at all this, right? sometimes we get very super spiritual and forget that you know spiritual is actually the ordinary things as well. You know, the ordinary things are you know, significant to God and spiritual in nature. So yeah, so some of these things, you know, consecration, living a pure life, holy life, generosity. Good works, kindness, all this having a lifestyle of worship. Right? Um, having said that, the third thing is to have a lifestyle of prayer, fasting. Prayer, talking to God, hearing from God. Prayer, again, you know, outpouring, pouring out of our heart to God. Prayer, focused, you know. Focus, battle, intercession. That is also prayer. So, having a lifestyle of prayer and having a lifestyle of fasting. So, we know, um, you know what happens when we fast. We have you know, we get things of the flesh, we are bringing focus to a whole lot of things. You know, the appetites of the flesh are just put away and, and we are focusing on the spiritual things and we are saying, okay, I'm doing this for a season. I'm doing this for a and I'm setting that apart, and so, so that again, uh, you know, there's something in the spirit that happens when we when we fast. We say like putting away the needs. So these are you know justifiable, uh, you know, rightful needs of the body, as simple as as basic as eating, right? Putting it aside so that I can see God. So when you make that choice. Yes, there is a sharpening in the spirit that happens. Right? So we have examples like uh, you know, Anna and the you know, Gospels. So there was this, she, the Gospel writer mentions Anna as a prophetess, one of the bird women. And she would spend time fasting and praying. She spent most of her time, says, this is what she did. Right? So it, it was part of her lifestyle. So many times we think that okay, uh, I I need to you know kind of isolate myself all the time. But that is not it. Okay. We are part of. You know, we are. We have responsibilities. We have you know maybe work, maybe responsibilities, uh, family. We are. You know, we have roles and responsibilities in the family, in the workplace. Maybe as a student, we have all those responsibilities. So. You know, neglecting those, right? It's with taking time out in a meaningful way, which is not perfect, you know, where we come back and get back to it. But to keep this as part of our right? So, um, hearing God's voice, we can write down what God is speaking. And then, so that kind of builds uh, a, a kind of a library of, okay, this is how God speaks. This is how God is. This is what he said. So when you actually write down and reflect on it, okay, this is how God spoke. This is what God spoke, but this is how he spoke it. Like it came as a dream. It came as someone who came and uh, 
knowledge or I, I was kind of uh, reiterated what God has already put in my heart. I was reading the scripture, where these scriptures, these verses, the read out, and God emphasized that. So we are actually making note of that, and that becomes a library of how God has been speaking. So the next time He speaks in the manner, we are quick to grab hold of it, we are quick to uh, listen and say, okay, this is God, this is God speaking. Test it, check it, and uh, work. Right. So, having a lifestyle of this hearing God's voice, having a lifestyle, building them history with God. Okay, this is how God's work. So, it is it is very valuable. And of course, intentional study of God's word, where there is a sowing of God's word in our hearts, where there is a you know, uh, intentional meditating of God's word, where God's word is. We are meditating on the word of God, thinking deeply, pondering deeply, like we see in uh, Ephesians. Um, sorry, Colossians chapter 3. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Okay, so let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, which means abundantly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. But look at that. Okay, verse 16, if you see. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart. So there's an outflow of the word of God dwelling in our hearts richly. So we make sure that we are we are exposing ourselves to the word of God. We are allowing the word of God to stay in us. Dwell in us. Yes. Um, so, which means that's an effort that we put in our sides, so from our side, and empowered by the Holy Spirit. So, there is an intentional study of God's word, not just a casual reading through of God's word. We, and like we you know, looked at it, in all labor, there is fruitfulness. So, so, our time in studying God's word, we say, okay, where am I going to use this? But in all labor, there is so, especially when it comes to matters of the spirit, so there is truth in this, right? So, um, and particularly when it comes to worship ministry, when there is a you know, sowing of God's word in our hearts, and we know uh, these are God breathed, so scripture is God breathed, and uh, you know, it is for uh, so many wonderful things happen because of uh, God's word. So, for a worship minister to have the word of God, to incorporate this prophetic scripture in the song, in the exhortation, uh, would be to speak the mind and heart of God. And when we are using scripture, using scripture in exhortation, using scripture in song, would also be uh, the, uh, communicating the heart and mind of God. So, so we need to have the word of God in our now, having said that, I also want to talk about, you know, like when it comes to prophetic worship, when it comes to ministering in prophetic worship, we also know that uh, it can happen in two ways. It can happen where God puts these thoughts, ideas, as we are preparing, as we are spending time in prayer, God, God put this, puts, uh, God puts this in our mind and draws it down when we are ministering. So it draws it down, it just a reminder, it just comes up. Or it can be the spontaneous, at the moment, uh, you know, prompting of God to speak out, sing out, to go in certain direction, which is again prompting, which you didn't think of, you didn't plan on, but then God leads in that direction, and you know that it's God's leading because you know how we built that history with God and recognize the voice of God, recognize the prompting of the Spirit in you. So. Uh, so all this happens, right? So, so in a team setting, uh, in a ministry team setting, worship ministry team setting, we need to expose the team to this, make the team aware of this. Maybe in a you know, training session, or even as we leave, say, just talk about it, so that the team understands why we are doing what we are doing. So, um, and so that can be. Uh, Way in which we uh, enter into this 
on a big question. Any questions here? Sometimes like it's a little bit like that. I don't know. So, the gold is not going to be like that. I don't know. So, how could gold be like that? Yeah. So, that is always a structure because we are not sure. And sometimes it's leaving. The outcome we know only by testing it. So, that is why it is a it is a work of faith. And so the best way is to actually test it out, take it out, and learn from that experience. Right? So um yeah, of course we're not saying that okay, this is what uh, we're not saying anything that is directional or you know, uh, those kind of things, right? So in ministry in worship, for example, uh, most of the time it is in the direction in which the worship time is led. Right? In terms of songs, in terms of theme, in terms of what God wants done there, and maybe you know, get into a time of uh, praying for each other or whatever, rather than directly ministry. That could also happen. So, um, so the thing is to always test it out, and uh, you get to know the fruit of it. Hopefully, it's not uh, like a critical mistake or anything. Right? So, that you think, okay, uh, okay, everyone, we are start stopping now and we are starting singing something totally different, something you know. So it changes the whole theme, and everybody is kind of uh, you know, focused and so uh, hooked on to uh, worship God in a certain way. And then we change the theme. It's like changing the page. It's saying, okay, now we're focusing on warfare. We're going after that. It just you sense that very strongly. Okay, enough of this. Let's move. Now, two things can happen. It can completely kill the whole, you know, the whole worship set. Right? People like feel. How quickly disengage that could happen, or it can take things to a higher lane altogether. Like where we were here experiencing aware of God's presence, God was doing something, but then just took it on to a different level altogether. So, yeah, so it can happen. If it's a mistake, you come back. So if it's, I'm talking about the context of ministry inversion. Right? So, it's a mistake, it's not bad. Um, yeah, so also when it comes to this thing, let me give this a prophetic word, right? So let's say there's a word we released, then not like it. So it's a word being released, then as a worship team ministry, how do you do that? That's, uh, that's always a challenge, right? As a worship leader, you're saying, okay, for some person you have a word of knowledge, you know, how to do this thing. The best way to do it is. After the service, after the worship time, I treat the worship time as a time of worship, ministry of people and um, whatever word of knowledge and word of public word God gives for an individual to to actually maybe share it after that to be missed. Make a lot of it. Remember, share it. Um, sometimes what happens is uh, not really something for the congregation, like as a church. To go up to the higher levels of uh, maybe prayer, to go up with higher levels of sanctification, that can be released. You know, because it's a collective thing that's happening that can be released. Um, or we can do it in a gentle way, also saying that you know some people here uh, they're going, you know, struggling with God, maybe angry with God, and God wants to make a change. And if you do this step, in, we can share in that way. It's best not to call attention to. A single person, uh, when we are ministering in worship, this is just my practical thought. Uh, because then what happens is uh, the focus turns to that person. Uh, and then, of course, you know, there is uh, there is an identification that happens, there is a heightened awareness of presence of God, etc. But during the worship time, what happens is uh, focus comes 
to um, to the word what was released and to that person and uh, somehow people I don't know, people find it difficult to again engage in active version so um, so it's best when we keep it till the end of the worship time and service and then share that point that is something that we can do. So when you like that, but my mind is always so that when people like that, when they don't want. So when it's happened, that what's the thing is to step out in faith, and especially in Bible college, it's a safe environment, and uh, so we, we can always say. It, this is what I sense. If you preface it by saying, if this is what I sense, the Lord is saying, or, or we close it by saying, kindly check. If you spend time in prayer, pray about it, check with God, um, and then do according to uh, then it's, it's fine. And especially things which are directional. Uh, directional meaning, you know, so which, which involves a person making a choice Go and make certain choices, important choices, something. So, but otherwise, if it's a if it's a word of encouragement, if it's a word of uh, comfort, that's fine. It just release it. It just say this is what I sense the Lord is saying. This is what I sense the Lord is putting in my heart, and you can share that. So when you preface that, then uh, it's the same thing. Right? It's a, we are allowing the person to whom it's intended. To, uh, to consider it, to check it, and uh, and proceed. It. So, so we can do that. Always do that. And then also, and it's a good thing when we, after doing that, maybe uh, here people are here, so we can always say, you know, there's a witness to your heart. Will it mean anything to you? And when people come back and give feedback and share, for me, uh, it was it was so. Then then you know. So the next time you are a little more confident, it's like, okay, that's how God's more. It's the same way I'm sensing, or I'm visualizing this, I'm seeing this, and my heart's posture is towards God. And so you're more confident to step in the direction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, to speak to the congregation. Yeah, to, so the thing is, see what happens is, uh, uh, like, now this is a, let's say this is the time when I call it a lot of more worship. So we need to be aware of what will happen when you speak, when you stop, when you speak. Now people are going to be listening. They are, they are, if they are communing with God, they are now stopping that and they are listening to what you are saying, right? So you would, you're just speaking and they're listening. So that communing with God is going to stop. Okay, so they are worshiping, they are you know, they're receiving from God, they're talking to God, they're pouring out their hearts. Now that's going to stop. So we need to be aware of that. Now, uh, now if it is already the deep communion with God, deep intimacy with God, people are. So do you want to? Stop that. So we think about it. You know, I this is what I sense. When can I release it? Right? So if I release it now, but if I'm going to start speaking, it's going to result in this. Right? And especially if it's going to be, I'm going to be speaking for about five minutes of this explaining things. So it's going to be like preaching. People will stop worshiping. And they're going to listen. So do I want to do it now? So that's something to. Or you can just mention very briefly, but in a line or two, saying, I just sense this is what God is doing, this is what they actually want. So that will be a lot more edifying, and people will not stop communing with God and continue on. Otherwise, you will see that people disengage, and most likely they will not again re engage in much. What is the objective of the worship ministry or the team? 
to facilitate that conversation that hard to really understand. So that's our objective. So we'll be failing in our objective if we don't, you know, don't facilitate that properly. So uh, we need to think, where can I release it? You can, you can actually do it you know, as you're finishing the worship time where you can actually speak, grab, uh, say what you share. I mean, what you said is what you saw. Share that and then and that will also be the case. But if you want to do it, then it's a, something lengthy. Uh, it's better not to do it right to the. So these are just suggestions, actually. But then uh, you very strongly sense that, okay, it has to be done. Say, go ahead, do it. <laughs> so whatever, not just feel so strongly. But uh, uh, it's going to be an effort for people to re engage. That's for sure. So, so these are some of the aspects, and it's be wonderful if we you know, build the team in it. And the team is aware, uh, everyone, and it's going to be a, you know, when you consider worship, it's going to be an ongoing thing. Why? Because now you will set, you know, you will have a set of people who will have a journey from, from the basics to where they are. Now, you know, you will have some people leave, who are to another city, go to you know, maybe another church, whatever. And you will have another set of people joining. So it means this needs to be again retold. All these truths need to be re-communicated. So mentally prepared for that. You know, I have to say this over and over and over again. Maybe many times this year, other times. So don't get tired of it. This is the truth. Um, people need to be rooted, established the truth. So you mentally make a note, I will have to say it again. I should not get tired of saying this again, repeating this to different kinds of people I have to say it. Right? Okay. And one more thing is people will not get it the first time you say it. Many times you think I they told no. The time I said we discussed it again, you know, not taking it, you know, you're not doing it. Well, it's going to take a few more times, right? Of reiterating and uh, you know, sharing this, but to sink in. So, you need to be patient and uh, need to be uh, reiterating this maybe one, two times, right? Okay. Um, so, that's about uh, uh, using uh, prophecy in worship, team being set to. So, build the culture. Right. It has to always be a culture of this. Right. So, how is the culture built? It's built over time. It's taking two steps, three steps at a time. It is rewarding those wins. Right? Uh, every time something you do more with, uh, and recognize it is important. The word meaning just say, hey, guys, we did a good job. We stepped in, we are aware of the presence of God, we are uh, our is tuned to this. And so, Overcoming all these, you know, all these difficulties, technical challenges, all the rising above. So, you know, so let it be a culture. Build a culture. Let it be over a period of time. Okay. So let's look at. Uh, yeah, we have some time, so we'll look at uh, you know, the next chapter. And it's more of a, you know, something to do with gadgets, technical stuff, right? So we'll kind of go through it and. Uh, yeah, so we talk about sound systems, PA. Right? So many times I've noticed that uh, you know, this may not be given much importance. Right? Whatever is there, use it. And I know, you know, because it's a question of money, it's a question of budget. And then I remember going on this mission trip to the same one of my churches in uh, Chhattisgarh. Right? So they, the sound system undergoes major punishment okay so they have one uh, it's one of those portable uh, uh, yeah, portable it has two cordless mics two uh, you know, bluetooth thing okay? and the volume is all the way up all the time okay and uh, one who's using it is also full volume all the time and it's just used to the max it's just blasted it's thing and then you know used over and over again so Thing is, uh, 
that may be not maintained well, may be not needed on the diet. But we understand that it's very important. Sound system, PA system is very important for to make the church, right? Uh, it's a, it's a church that's glowing. You, you want to make sure whatever is happening is communicated well, is heard well, so that people can actually receive it. So, uh, you know, here are some things to consider, right? Sound, sound system, details of it. I will just go through it. You know, it's, uh, I know it's a little bit technical, etc. So, uh, maybe you can also tell me. So when, when you look at the sound system, what are some things that are there? Right? So we have speakers, we have a mixer, we have some amplifier which amplifies sound from the mixer to the speaker. Sometimes there are no mixers, it's directly to the amplifier. We have mics or microphones which amplify what you speak. Uh, what uh, so we look at each of these, right? So we have microphones, so we mics, what we call as mics, right? mics, cables. We have mics with cables, we have mics without cables, we what we call as cordless mics, right? And very useful. Uh, we also have lethal mics, which are for speech, right? You connect it here and use it for recording, etc. We have some you know, everyday technology changing and based on your budget, you can uh, what you're comfortable with, you can get you know, what, what suits you. We also have headsets, right, mics like this, which uh, which are pretty much your hands are free, you turn pages, whatever. So we have all these, uh, for, but typically for we have mics which are meant for speech. We have mics which are meant for singing. Okay? So which are based on their sensitivity, based on their output. If you look at a lethal mic, it is meant for speech. It's not really meant for singing it's not meant for so it may not pick up all the frequencies it's meant for speech uh, whereas mics which are meant for singing which uh, which give a clear output it takes care of all that frequency you know, in the singing you go up you go come down speech is at a very you know it's a, it's a very steady state you know, that, like it, it doesn't vary as much like singing like, so singing has extremes of you know High frequency, low frequency, and everything in between. Right? There's a fluctuation constantly that's happening. So, 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 so pick the mic which which suits the purpose. Um, and then uh, you know, there are mics like uh, SM58, which are you know, just standard vocal mics. That's something for sure. And uh, you know, uh, the what do you call the model number is just the and it's used you know, very, very widely here in India, elsewhere. And it's a proper mic for booking. Right? Considering it, I think that's the best way, uh, that's my best mic to go in for. It's a corded mic, there are also cordless mics. Okay, what's the mixer? What does the mixer do? The mixer is from feedback series. So, what does the mixer have? Games. <laughs> knobs. <laughs> okay. Knobs. Game. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what does it do if you want to look at it? What? Why do we need a mixer? It helps us uh, uh, make the voice better for mm. yeah so so yeah so basically what does it do it is <laughs> one more time you say things <laughs> yeah okay so let's uh, let's look at some i, I just want to put this for the uh, yeah obviously okay so uh, i just present uh, for the uh, Um, yeah. Okay, so um, so I'm just adding this uh, page. So it basically, it's 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 got a lot of things there. It's a mixer. Um, let's say we look at this. Uh, 
those. Sorry. Okay, so um, you know, if you look at this image okay, on the left most, we're saying that it has some inputs okay, or the right um, right extreme. Okay, it has some inputs. So basically, your mic goes into it. Right? The mic cable goes into it. The instrument cables go into it. Right? And uh, everything else, you know, all the instruments that are uh, that you're using, all the vocal mics that you're using, everything goes into it. Okay? So, so what are the function of the mixer? The mixer is to set the volume, the loudness of it, the sweetness of it, the frequencies of it, and right? everything to adjust, to set it so that it is pleasing on the outside. So it's one place where you can fix the volume levels because the volume can be loud. Somebody speaking can be very loud, so you, you fix it. Somebody, the instrument can be very loud. So rather than running to each and every place where you need to change it, you have it in one place, it comes in here and there is an output. It goes to the speakers. So you make sure that it's blended well. What we use it, the word we used is equalized. What we call is EQ, right? equalized well. So there are several norms. We won't go into the details of it. There could be the gain, there could be, like you said, the highs, the mids, the lows. And and in some of the mixers, there are also the gates. So, what is a gate? gate when you open the gate, people okay. can go. When you close the gate, you cannot go. So, that's what it does. So, what, what a gate does is you fix the level. Beyond this level, no matter how loud the person shouts, it won't go. The gate stops. And so, you might be shouting out, the gate will it is set at certain decibel. That's, that is what goes out. So, which means my ears are, as an audience, our ears are protected. You might shout out no matter what, but this is what comes. So, um, a mixer actually is a very useful but <laughs> piece of equipment. You're thinking of somebody who's very low. Right? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so we, we use it. So, we'll look at it next class uh, more into details. Thank you. Yes.